Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Jonathan and today I'm gonna be doing the black booktuber tag. Shane over at Luxurious Blue told me about this tag like when I first started my channel which was just a couple of months ago and I've been planning on doing it forever but now is the time since I'm gonna be recording a bunch of videos like in a very short time span. So I was like might as well do the black booktuber tag so if you're interested in seeing my answers to this very black very beautiful tag keep on watching and uh make sure that you press that thumbs up button press that subscribe button and um don't forget to drop something in the comment section below i want to know what you're reading and let's get right into this tag all right so the black booktuber tag originated somewhere i'll drop all of that information in the uh description box so i don't like get in trouble or anything so the first question is tell us a little bit about yourself so my name is jonathan i am currently 23 years old i am a high school english teacher i love reading books i love talking about books i love writing about books. Um, I have a blog called tobeblackinlove.com. I procrastinate a lot. That's why there aren't a ton of recent posts on there. I'm really kind of like a boring person. I have a lot of very like old manish tendencies. I kind of like routines, um, doing the same thing every single day. Uh, yeah, so that's me. The next question is, who's a Black author that you love that a lot of people don't know about? Um, I think that for the most part, people know about the Black authors that I really, really enjoy. You know, like the Baldwins and the Toni Morrisons and the Zora Neale Hurstons. So I wasn't even really thinking. There's uh, Kiesa Lehman, there's Randall Keenan, there's Darnell Moore, there's Michael Arsenio, Tayari Jones. Frederick Smith, Deshaun Charles Winslow, Brian Washington, Larry Duplican, who wrote uh, Blackbird, which was turned into the movie. There's River Solomon. There's Angela Johnson, who wrote so many of the books that I loved in my high school and even middle school years, like The First Part Last and Heaven. There's, there's a bunch. And so, yeah, <laughs> I wasn't thinking. Um, my favorite book about the Black experience. I would have to say that my favorite book about the Black experience would have to be probably Their Eyes Are Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. And that's because of just like the use of vernacular and it's such a beautifully written story. I think that that is the book that I read that made me that made me decide that I wanted to be an English teacher. I was in high school, I was taking AP Lit. My teacher, Mrs. Sims, amazing woman. She had us read Their Eyes Are Watching God and I had never read anything like Their Eyes Are Watching God before. And so when I read that book, it really just, it, <laughs> it sparked something. It really sparked something. And just like, you know, just searching to find yourself and uh, freedom, looking for freedom and looking for love. Just all the themes in that book, phenomenal. Question number four is my favorite book by a black author. And I would have to say that my favorite book by a black author I would have to take it back, like way, way back. And I would have to go all the way back to the beginning where I really started loving reading. And I would have to say Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. If you've never read Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry by Mildred D. Taylor, you should be ashamed of yourself. It's like a classic beyond a classic. I think that I read that book in, it had to have been third grade, third or fourth grade. And it really just changed the game. You know, sitting in class, especially sitting in class, I was I was surrounded by a lot of white people. But sitting in class and reading a book about racism and just everything that was going on during like the Jim Crow era, y'all, it changed me. And I think that 
that was that seeing that sort of like representation and talking about like my own history the history of black people at such a young age it definitely changed things it really changed things for me so yeah roll up to hear my cry because that was the beginning beginning like og all right recommending a book by a black and queer person so i would just have to say you know of course invisible life i actually i bought this book in college was it my freshman year it was freshman year of college and i had never read a book like this i bought this along with a visitation of spirits which i've talked about in a previous video but reading a book that centers black gay men was something and just talking about sexuality talking about sex talking about relationships you know even though even though it could be seen as you know problematic in some ways, you know, like talking about like BL culture and all of that stuff. Or that people try to like twist in like homophobic ways. Elon Harris was really, he was, he was spilling the tea. <laughs> Messy, sad. And like the, the books that came after this really discussing like the AIDS crisis and you know, you laugh, you cry. And I'm gonna keep saying it, just really changed the game for me. So there's just books at certain points of my life that really changed things in terms of, you know, me seeing representation and myself in literature. And this, this was, this was the peak. This was my college peak. This was before, like, I was really, like, you know, when I first got to college, like, before I was, like, getting into Baldwin, his way of describing, you know, sexuality and Black life, this this was the good stuff. This was the drama that I really needed because I think that, that, you know, lately I've been reading a lot of memoirs and, you know, like the real life, you know, trauma and different things that a lot of black gay men have dealt with. And, but this was where I just needed like a good bit of drama, like sex in the city, you know, um, girlfriends, but for a black gay man, you know, an extension of like Noah's Ark and things like that. And so this, this was, this was great. And then like post-college, you know, like very, I'm talking about like very recently, I Can't Date Jesus by Michael Arsenio changed the game once again, because this was when I was like, oh, so we getting like the memoirs, memoirs, like the, the essay collections, the, um, you know, with comedy and really talking unapologetically about like life as a black gay man like literally this this was the the fourth the fourth changing of the game um and i just loved this i could see myself i really was able to see myself in this we're getting in like a more academic sort of space in terms of representation for black queer women audrey lord Sister Outsider, no, she was, she, she didn't care if you knew she was black and a lesbian. And this, this collection of essays, it really gives you a lot of insight into life as a black queer woman. And you know, like her, she talks about, um, she talks about just everything, just everything. And then of course, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. You know, like classic quote, classic Audre Lorde quote. And then last but not least, I would have to say Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin. When it comes to Baldwin and the way that Baldwin discusses Black queerness, it is, it's, because Baldwin, he grew up in the church. He grew up, you know, destined to be a preacher. He, he was, he, he was preaching. He was, he was groomed to be a minister. And so in his writing, you just see all of that biblical imagery and the illusions. And it's something I was able to connect with being somebody that grew up in the church. And so Baldwin kind of unlocked that side, you know, like where it wasn't necessarily just like the drama and the tea, you know, that I got from Elin Harris, but that you could describe life and black life and black culture and, even black queerness in some of the most beautiful poetic um, ways and, you know, translating pain into words and hurt into words. And that's what you really got with Go Tell It on the Mountain, um, which was semi-autobiographical, just so, such a great, powerful 
novel. And it also was his debut, which still blows my mind to this day. Recommending a book by a Black author that makes me happy. <laughs> I would have to say one of my most recent reads, which is such a fun age. Such a fun age by Kylie Reed. Oh my gosh, that book. I listened to it on audiobook. And I've talked, I've talked some trash about audiobooks on my channel, but such a fun age. That was like, <laughs> how many times have I said drama in this video? But that was drama. I felt like I was watching TV. Like I felt like I was watching one of those good, juicy TV shows, like messy TV shows. It very much so reminded me, and I feel like people probably said this, reminded me of Little Fires Everywhere. It was so good and there was so much drama and it was hilarious. It was absolutely hilarious. And I really needed that because I think that the way that a lot of people have been going at each other about that book, it's been real wild. And um, I'm just like, this book was so enjoyable. It was so enjoyable. And I don't understand how, one, how people can like say they didn't finish the book. I will listen to that again on audiobook. The audiobook was, was peak, was peak audiobook. Um, Cause I really can't get into audiobooks, but that one changed the game. Number eight, recommend some black booktubers. So when I saw this one, I was like, I definitely have to make a list. In terms of like booktubers that I watch, I'm very picky in terms of like the booktubers that like, if I watch your channel and I watch your, and I watch your um, book reviews and like your videos like straight through, you've really, you've really held my attention. And so like, in terms of my favorite black booktubers, like ones that I really, really, really have been getting into, Ashley from Bookish Realm, love her videos. They're so good. One of my favorite YouTubers, period. Comfy Cozy Up, y'all. I am going to start journaling purely because of Comfy Cozy Up. So check out her channel. Jordan from Left on Red was one of the first people that I followed um, on booktube. And I love her videos. They're so good. Um, her reviews and the, the types of books that she reads with all of these people, but like specifically black booktubers. I really like watching people that read similar things to what I read. And all of these people have read, read similar things to what I read. Ashley from Bookish Realm definitely reads like everything. And so eventually I want to get there, you know, making sure I'm covering different content areas and um and age age ranges um yeah Jane from Luxurious Blue of course because he was one of the first people that really like started engaging with my videos and I just always appreciate you know black solidarity like for real for real across booktube you can see it's very broken up and very cliquish and you know, like the romance people stick with the romance people and the YA people stick with the YA people and the fantasy people stick with the fantasy people. And the way that so many black booktubers, you know, really have supported, um, you know, just like commenting on my videos and just liking my videos and retweeting my videos. Like my Rama from Young Gifted and Black commenting on my videos, like I, and her content, is phenomenal like the books that she reads watch her channel for good suggestions for books you probably have never heard of you know and that's always a really great thing when people read books that like you've never heard of and then lois lois was the first person to ever ask me to do like a to be a part of like a book club and so we actually just finished reading the black flamingo which i'm going to be talking about in um a later video at some point but just like small things like that, phenomenal. And her channel is great, so go check that out. I really appreciate all the support from Black booktubers. Like, we gotta stay together because there, there aren't that many of us. There really are not that many of us. And in terms of Black booktubers that actually, you know, really read Black authors. And then the last question is talk about a book by a Black author that's coming in 2020. Um, really, I'm so bad at keeping up with new releases. And so I really, the only book that I've really noticed and it just came out this month, so definitely support that because I absolutely loved Brian Washington's first book, 
So Memorial by Brian Washington just came out actually in October. So definitely support Brian Washington with that new release because I've heard such great things about Memorial and everybody seems to really enjoy Brian Washington's writing. So definitely check out that book. I'll include um, the link to that in the description box below. So I hope all of you enjoyed this Black Booktuber tag and I will catch you in the next video. And always remember that you are loved.